You're listening to episode 89 of the Play Therapy Community Podcast. Welcome to Play Therapy Community Podcast, providing connection, information, and inspiration to child therapists all around the world. Here's your host, a licensed psychotherapist, a registered play therapist, and my mom, Jackie Flynn. Well, hi there. Thank you so much for listening to another episode of Play Therapy Community Podcast. I love meeting with you like this. On today's episode, I have Ann Beckley Forrest. I'm super excited about this conversation. But before we jump into this conversation, I want to tell you about the EMDR Learning Community. The EMDR Learning Community is one of my favorite things. I'm an EMDR trained therapist, um, a consultant, and I do some advanced trainings. And I just love this community. The people are amazing. It's hosted by Rotem Brayer, and he just offers so many free resources. It's free to join, and it's at emdr-learning.com. All right, so let's jump into our conversation today with Ann Beckley Forrest. Ann is someone that's really important to me. She's not only a colleague, but she's a, a really special friend of mine. And we're working together um, hosting the first annual Playful EMDR Summit, which is going to be amazing. It's as a Anna Gomez and Marshall Lyles, y'all know what I think of both of those people. They're pioneers in our field. Um, but I've really gotten to know Ann really well during this planning process because it is a lot of work to <laughs> to play in so um we've been meeting and um she's just incredible i've learned so much from her and she has a lot of like play therapy trainings that um are like in addition to the emdr trainings so i know one of her big vibes are just uh, when a new therapist are starting out there's this confidence and you know what does it take or eagerness what does it take to get from new to fill in that confidence and competence um so I, I wanted to bring her on to talk about that um so Anne, before we get started though let me have you just tell people who you are and what you do Sure. Um, so I am really happy to be here, by the way, and ditto back to you with all the love, Jackie. Um, mm-hmm. So Rotom, Rotom's amazing. He's kind of he new. He is. To that. I'm, I was really glad to hear about that yes. community. Um, so I, my background's in play therapy. I've been a play therapist for 20 some years, 22 years, something like that. Uh, and I, um, when I was starting out in play therapy, the way I got into it, I was actually working with older kids without play therapy as the foundation, just trying to do like CBT, but sort of like, you know, dumb it down a little bit. Um, lots <laughs> of talk. Um, and some kids, uh, you know, really would agree with me and we had a good relationship, but that didn't necessarily mean that it was transferring outside of the therapy room. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, and, and then I got a job working with really young kids and I'm like, oh, none of this stuff's working. And that's how I first got introduced to play therapy. And so I think back to that time now when I do trainings um, and I still, I love just teaching the foundation courses in play therapy, taking people who have these like eager hearts for children. They, many of them are new graduates or they might even still be, you know, finishing up their master's and they're so eager to help kids, but then, you know, what do you, what comes next? Right. And you have to have a theory base and you have to, you, a lot of counseling programs do not prepare people for what it's like in the real world to work with kids. So that's where I think play therapy comes along. And I, um, I think it's such an important thing for play therapy for therapists to learn how to send messages of safety to kids and play is such a natural way of doing that. And then, then the next step is, can we use that play strategically or therapeutically to, in order to, you know, tap into whether it's trauma anxiety, whatever it is that, you know, kids are struggling with, how can we then take those concepts of what helps people, but then bring it into um, a a world that children feel comfortable, they can be themselves, instead of sitting, like I always say in my trainings, you know, if your office feels a little bit like the principal's office, you got to do something about that. (laughs) Oh, gosh, I just, I literally just got a tightness in my chest thinking about the principal's office, and I've only ever been in it for good things. So, so (laughs) you're saying like that playful feel, and I know you really do live that out. I got to see your playroom um, on a um, Zoom call recently. I really never grew up, Jackie. That's (laughs) it. I get excited about more excited about a toy sale than almost anything else. So, (laughs) 
<laughs> and I know like um, playful, yeah, you playful EMDR, playful, it really describes your personality too. <laughs> now I know uh, you I say. Think I think it's an issue for people get self-conscious around children especially when you're new and you have so many things like, Oh, I have all these goals and the kids have so many problems. And then we, you know, we can lose that attunement yes, with, um, because we get, you know, inside our own heads or whatever. And, and, you know, the, the formation process of becoming a play therapist really helps with that. I don't know. What do you remember your first play therapy session? Jay? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. It was actually in grad school. Dr. Delina Dillman Taylor was my um Ooh, I uh, don't know who that is actually. Oh yes, <laughs> I learned from the best. I was so nervous and I came from the teaching background, which um it makes me think about Dr. Ileana Gill. Um she uh says um it's more important to be with um and think about being with rather than what we do. Or what we say and it sounds like that's aligned with what you're talking about is just really having that playful vibe to you and not have like an agenda of we're going to do a b and c we're going to engage in play therapy which i think a common misconception is that um i mean maybe from people that haven't heard of play therapy or don't know about it is that play is used to get the child to talk but the actual therapy is in the play yeah Exactly. Well, and, you know, I talk a little bit about, you know, I know you're a big person in neuroscience and, you know, you, you talk a lot about how, what we're learning, you know, this is stuff that's come along since my initial training in play therapy, all of what we're learning about the brain, about activation, about, you know, polyvagal and all of the things that you're, I know you're doing a lot of work in, um, play therapists, we've been doing that all along. We just didn't know what to call it. Right. So this is, um, is really an affirmation of the therapeutic powers of play that there are so many ways in which this can help, um, people to, to shift even at the neurobiology level. Um, so, you know, and especially a lot of, uh, unfortunately our newest therapists are often working with our most at risk kids. It's really kind of an upside down system. Yes. in our mental health system right now that, you know, in the, at the clinic level, the community-based mental health clinic level, there's a lot of new therapists that, that um, are just kind of thrown in the deep end with some kids with lots of um, attachment wounds and early trauma. And really play therapy is the starting point. And, you know, even traditional play therapy, child-centered work, how to be with a child, how to track what's going on in the play, reflect it back to them for validation and mirroring all of that. Um, it's a, an important foundation, um, mm -hmm. for especially for working with kids with lots of, you know, lots of at risk kinds of stuff going on. And then, you know, I'm a more prescriptive play therapist, as I think you are as well. Then we take it, we take that foundation and we go places with it. So absolutely, that's, so that's what I try to do in training and just sort of see it as a developmental process mm -hmm. um, and try to take people through. Also, is starting to put the foundations of theory under yeah. your work. So that you feel like you understand what kind of therapeutic change is possible through the lens of like gestalt theory or, um, you know, the traditional child centered theory or Adlerian, you know, and try to introduce people to that kind of thinking. And then they can go out and get more of the ones that resonate with them. So absolutely. You know, I love some gestalt that Oakland. <laughs> yeah. As soon as, you, as soon as I said gestalt, I knew that would make you happy. <laughs> I'm a huge Lisa Dion fan that Adler and I had that training as well. I love it. I am like maybe even on the opposite of the um, continuum from you. I like child centers, probably my my preference out of them all. Depending. Oh, I would say I probably spend 80 percent of the minutes I'm with kids in child centers. Yes. Even be. working prescriptively, we still spend a lot of time. You you might prompt something or you initiate something, but then you're going to use that that validating and reflection and let go of the driver's, you know, seat and let things simmer for the child in play. I think that's so important. Girl, I have learned so much from you, just even like planning this summit with you. And then um, we, we've gotten on videos. And I got to see your playroom. I even just seeing having you describe it, but seeing you how you um, have everything set up supports that just kind of setting back or moving more into that directive. 
Um, now, I know you're a trainer for the Association for Play Therapy, and if you're listening to this and you're not familiar with the Association for Play Therapy yet, you can find more about them at A4, the number four, A4PT.org. I know to become a trainer for them, there's some rigorous requirements. So you know by the time you get a training, it's super quality. And and you're you're a trainer for them and you have a training like on like what are your trainings on? Yeah. So um I have a um I do it usually twice a year. It's coming up in September. I do um a play therapy training series. It's three three twelve hour workshops you could take one just one or all of them and the idea is that it be a kind of developmental process so that there's a foundations of play therapy um which is kind of what we were just talking about putting you know putting some of those foundations in another training that's models of play therapy and also has a um a unit that's designed to um help people you know think about ethics and diversity and inclusion which is part of the new standards for the association for play therapy so we have a unit on that and then I do I have like a, a training for, for how to use play therapy with trauma, which is, you know, kind of my specialty area. So that's the, you know, I usually ask people to take one of the early ones first before they take the trauma one. Um, and I just my goal is to, you know, firstly, you know, have like a cohort that goes through that process together. Um, and there's small uh, virtual webinars where people are on camera. They're practicing in breakout rooms. Um, they have their own supplies. Uh, it's not quite as much fun as being in person, but it's a lot more accessible and cheaper for people. Yeah. Um, so anyway, so that I, I have, even though I have some other projects that I do now with Playful EMDR, I have kept this process on, on, in my own, you know, this is at my, my own website and beckleyforest.com. Um, I've kept those trainings there because I really love getting to know people who are either new to the field or people who see the need for children, because right now we have such an incredible shortage of therapists who feel confident working with children. Um, and they, they want to just kind of boost up those skills so they can feel more confident, more comfortable with kids in the room. Yeah, yeah, I mean, definitely in our community, that is certainly true. And I think across the board, um, it's funny to hear you say, um, oh, trauma is kind of my specialty. For those of you listening, like Anne is truly like one of our world experts in healing trauma with children. She does it through EMDR therapy. So it's kind of your specialty. It's your specialty, <laughs> girl. <laughs> You're Thank you, therapy. Becky, for, you know stroking my ego. Yeah, <laughs> but, for real, I mean, though. but you know, really I'm first and foremost, I'm a clinician yeah. and I'm training from my own experiences. And then I think we have a growing uh, body of evidence to support what we're doing. And that's another reason to not just dabble, but to get formal training and to even get on a path to a credential, like the play therapy, you know, credential through APT is um, because, you know, we're not dabbling here. We are serious about what we're doing. And there's a lot of resources and support out there to make therapists um, feel more successful. And to me, that is the thing that I do to not be traumatized by the stories I hear or the suffering of others is if I, as long as I don't feel helpless, so if I feel empowered as a therapist, then I can hang in there and I can, you know, I, I always say to people, I want you all to be in the field in 10 years. And the only way to do that is to get good training and to feel supported in that. Girl, that's beautiful. Literally, I, I can't even remember what I was going to say after that. <laughs> <laughs> that is like a make the world a better place. When you say that play therapy helps with um, big stuff, like a lot of times that's really the only thing because it creates such a, a safe space. Um, with some of the most unthinkable circumstances. Now, um, and we're almost out of time, but I want to make sure people know where to go to learn more from you. You mentioned your website, but if you could just say it again. And sure. um, yeah, I do want to so, say real quick before you say that, big shout out to um, uh, the book, um, The Therapeutic uh, Powers of Play, Dr. Drew's and Dr. Schaefer's book. That is where, you know, um, Anne is talking about the, uh, the powers and the benefits of play therapy. You can find a lot there as well. All right. Mm -hmm. So your website. Yeah. Benefits. Great book. Yeah. So I do. So if um, people are looking to connect with me around play therapy training specifically, it's just my name. It's Anne Beckley 
Okay. Um, and then I do have a website that I share with Annie Monaco. That's for people who want to integrate play therapy with EMDR and that's playful EMDR. Dot com And that's also where you can find out about the summit that Jackie is a partner in. Um, and we're very excited about that. And, and, you know, they're kind of bringing together different, you know, train different therapists who are trained in different models, but having an integrative mindset, and integrative approach. So, yes. Oh, my gosh. It's so much fun, too. We got to play on the beach together. <laughs> all right. All right. Thank you so much. You take care. Oh, Jackie, this was great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye-bye.